One, two, three. Pachamama. Okay, good luck. Eh? Let's go this way, please. Let's do this. Machu Picchu, one of the new seven wonders of the world and by far Peru's most visited tourist attraction. Nestled in the sacred valley, 80 kilometers to the northwest of the ancient Inca capital of Cusco, it is one of the most iconic places on the planet. People come from all over the world to see this lost city of the Inca and it has been one of the highest destinations on our bucket list for many years. There are many ways to get to Machu Picchu these days, from luxurious train rides to buses, but of course we wanted the traditional trekking experience. The Salcantay trek is an increasingly popular alternative to the original Inca trail and for us at least it seemed to offer a much more diverse and interesting set of experiences including the Humantay Lagoon and the chance to stay in some really unique accommodations. We opted for the classic five-day trek with the Salcantay trekking company who are an amazing company with some incredible guides. And today is finally the day that we are doing it. Yes, it's going to be free in the morning and we're <laughs> very, very pumped being this early, especially you because you're not an early bird. Yeah, even I'm like quite awake now because yeah. I'm just very excited. <laughs> this has been like one of the very top things on our bucket list for so long and it feels a little bit unreal still that we're starting this trek today. Once we start sweating on the trail, I think we'll realize. Well, we've got all of our stuff ready. We've got our duffel bags with all of our clothes in, <clears throat> our day packs. Basically, well, 99% ready. Yeah. <laughs> everything we need for five days of trekking. I'm really excited, we're going to finish up packing up our stuff and head out to the bus. After a two and a half hour drive from Cusco, we arrived in the small village of Moyapata to eat a well needed breakfast before hopping back in the van and continuing on to Calacancha. We were given some snacks for the day and joined up with the rest of our group to prepare for the start of our trek. So it means Pachamama, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, you know, which is very important, okay? Do you get very good breakfast? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes? yes, so we make loud, yes? <laughs> one, two, three, Pacha Mama. Mama. One more, yeah, one more. One more. <laughs> louder, eh? Louder. One, two, three, Pacha Mama. Mama. Okay, good luck for everyone, eh? So this first day is probably one of the easier days yes. of the five. We only have to walk about 10 kilometers in total and it's pretty flat. We started at about 3,800 meters of elevation and we're only going up to about 4,200 overall at the lagoon. And our campsite tonight is going to be around 3,900 meters. So it could get a little chilly in the night, yeah, but... Now we're currently in t-shirts, so it's really yeah. hot. Today overall is just a pretty chill day. It's yeah. like getting you acclimatized a little bit. Get to know the other... Yeah. From the group, the other ten of us. We're making our way along this aqueduct now. Really not been too bad so far. It's been pretty easy. Like the start, we had a bit of an uphill, but after that, it's basically flat and downhill to the campsite. The views are just unbelievable all the way along here. We've got a little bit more to go to the campsite tonight, which we're a bit excited to show you. They're going to be some really cool accommodations we've yeah. got. This afternoon, we're going to be going up to Humantai Lagoon, which is a beautiful lagoon. We're very excited about that because you can do day trips there too. When we booked this trek, we were really happy that it included obviously the lake.
So we have arrived at our camp for tonight and tonight we are staying in these very cool looking sky domes that you can see behind us. Fortunately this one is ours right here but it still has the cover on so under here so underneath the covers, they look like those ones behind me just there. The idea is that at night you get, you know, if the, if the sky is clear, you can see the stars and everything and just look up from bed into the night sky, which is pretty awesome. Unfortunately, it has just started to rain, so we're not sure how much we're going to be able to see tonight, but fingers crossed, we'll be able to see something. This is the smallest doorway I think I've ever walked through in comparison. Yeah, I really got to watch your head here. Yeah, especially at night if you go out of the toilet. <laughs> it's more a crawl space than a door. Well, it's cute. I like it. It reminds me of the igloos, the Eskimos yeah. live in, no? just finished lunch which was very very nice and a lot of food but thankfully now we have about an hour to digest it before we head up to Humantai Lake. We'll get some nice views of Humantai Lake when we get up there because it's supposed to be very very beautiful. Yeah, it's one of the highlights of this trek anyway so we don't want to miss it. Yeah. How do I look? Because I, I feel like I look ridiculous. You look a bit colourful. Yeah. Got my poncho, rain jacket, double bagged the, uh, full bagged the backpack. Which is orange. Ready to go. Hopefully it won't get our clothes, our main clothes, too wet. Because it's still chucking it down. Fortunately, as we began our hike, the weather started getting better and better, which made the short two-kilometer hike up to the lagoon much more enjoyable. Look at that reflection. Lake is a beautiful emerald green lagoon sitting below the towering mountain at a height of about 4,200 meters. It is one of the most picturesque spots along the Sarkante track and well worth the extra effort to climb up to it. Oh my god, Hamantai Lake is just so gorgeous. I think the last time we've seen these beautiful blue waters were in the Huesta Capotocina in Mexico. And whilst the hike up here was pretty tough, it was well worth every drop of sweat we had. Honestly, it's just amazing. Plus, you don't get that in the Huesta Capotocina. No. <laughs> the color of the water is just stunning. And we got lucky as well because the rain stopped as soon as we started our hike. I can't believe that we're here. Definitely perk number one for the Salcante trek. Yes. 100%. Look at the view. This looks a lot better than it did when we first arrived. Oh my god, this is amazing. Wow. That is like, wow. Yeah, it makes a big difference with the roof off. Hopefully we see lots of stars tonight. Oh, I don't want it to get <laughs> dark. But I want to and the dawn at the same time. I want to stare at these mountains. Wow. Oh my goodness. These huts are pretty cool. Not only do they have the most amazing views of the mountains and the sky, but you can also charge your stuff right here in the hut. Right. This is very luxurious. For five days, mm -hmm. you need your phone charge. After another incredible meal cooked by our amazing chefs, we settled in to watch the beautiful sunset over the mountains from our sky dome.
So I think we've got everything we need for a good night's sleep. The company that we're with provided us with these linens. So you get in the linen, and then after you're in the linen, you get in the sleeping bag. So it should stay pretty warm. It is very, very cold in these domes. There's also the two big pillows, big blanket. So you can always put more layers on. I think we're just gonna sleep like this. Hopefully get a decent night's sleep. We've got a 4.45 start in the morning, wake up call. I'm gonna wake us up with some coca tea, which is really nice. Tomorrow is probably gonna be the toughest day of all the days. We're ascending very, very high in the morning and I'll tell you all about that tomorrow. But for now, I think it's been a long day and we want to get a good night's sleep. So we're ready for tomorrow. So I will see you on day number two. Are you ready to go? I don't know. <laughs> this is the longest day. Longest it's and toughest day. Hardest day too. The highest elevation. So if we survive today, then we're good. <laughs> yeah, the guide said if we survive today, then we'll find the rest of it pretty easy. <laughs> this is one of the important day. Probably one of the more difficult days. Today is a bit difficult because of high altitude and one of the long distance. You know, we walk the four days, the longest one, but lower altitude. Just try to make your all best. Okay, we say Pacha Mama down and mom, Mama up, okay? One, two, three. Pacha Mama! Okay, good luck, eh? Let's go this way. Let's do this. So we're just starting day two. We are leaving our campsite down there in the valley. Today, as we said, is the toughest day for sure. We're starting at 3,900 meters of elevation and we're gaining about 730 meters of elevation today. So we're going up to about 4,630 meters, which is crazy. We're going all the way up there. Yeah, it's gonna be a really tough morning, but then once we get to that top point, the Salkante Pass, we're then gonna head back down towards the cloud forest on the other side. So it should start to warm up a little bit and also be a bit easier in the second half of the day. And the total distance we're walking today is about 21, 22 kilometers. So it's a much longer day than yesterday as well. Overall, probably the toughest day of the trek. Currently going up the second steep section, which is apparently longer and steeper than the first one. These constant mules. They're like waiting for them. Mm -hmm. I think we must be about 4,000. 200, 300 meters, maybe another 300 meters of elevation. We've come from all the way down in the valley. You know, the steep bit's definitely tough. You take it slow, it's not too bad, but it's been like periodically quite flat, which has been a nice break from the, the steepness. It's not just up the whole way, which is nice. Yeah, a little bit more up, and then hopefully we get to Salcante Pass, the highest point we're gonna be at on the whole trek, and then it's all downhill from there. <laughs> Oh, Almost, you got this. We've probably done about four kilometers. I'm 22 though. Yeah, so. not come far. Almost right under the shadow of Salkantai Mountain now, which is this one. I think it's, from what the guide said, the third highest in... Kinko Square, we don't yeah. only, but... We're gonna have a look at it when we have internet and then... Yeah, we'll put it on the screen if we're wrong. It's very high, it's like around 6,000 meters. It would be amazing to climb it though. Yeah. But we would definitely need like proper mountaineering experience and mm -hmm. equipment. Every time we see a mountain, we just want to climb it. Like, it's just <laughs> us. We don't have any mountaineering real experience, but it's just like looking at it, we just want to get up it.
Made it to Salkante Pass. <laughs> Salkante Pass is the highest point on the Salkante Trek and after a very difficult ascent, the views from the top were stunning and worth every bit of muscle pain we were feeling. We had a little chill out on the Selkintay Pass, had some nice coca tea. We learned and... some really cool facts about the Incas yeah. and the mountains and how important they are. And just, just enjoyed the views because yeah, honestly amazing. we have the best day today, couldn't yeah. have asked for a better day. But now so... the hardest part of the day is probably done, we still have quite a long way to go. But it should all be downhill, downhill. so fingers crossed it's going to be a little bit easier. Yeah. We are heading down into this valley, our campsite for tonight is about 2,900 meters about a thousand meters lower than our campsite last night should and be warmer. <laughs> so yeah should last be. night was freezing and we've got some cool accommodations again that we're going to stay at tonight so i can't wait to show you those yeah. look at that little lagoon it's so beautiful the color is amazing it's so clear pristine Our guide was telling us that this whole area here behind us, all these rocks, about two years ago, just before the pandemic, there was a big piece of snow and ice come off the Salkante mountain into the lake and it caused the lake to just like rise up over the lip there. It just sent all of this rock and water tumbling down the valley here that we're walking through, which is pretty terrifying. He said uh, people lost their homes, about five people died. It's pretty scary stuff, but you can just see this, the scale of it. You really don't want to mess with Mother Nature. We finally made it to lunch. It's been about six or seven hours since breakfast. Not like I'm super hungry to be fair. We had some snacks along yeah. the way, which is nice. Definitely going to sit down and drink and rest for a bit. We've definitely burned a lot of calories. <laughs> So we've just finished lunch, it was delicious as usual. We're just now about to enter the cloud forest, which is actually sort of the uppermost area of the Amazon rainforest, which is crazy. So behind us, you've got the, the mountain passes that we've just passed. And in front of us, you've got the start of the cloud forest just here. And that then stretches for, for miles and miles as the Amazon and becomes the rainforest as it gets crazy lower. This landscape it's been nuts, yeah. Today. I think this is going to be one of the most interesting. Most diverse yeah, days most diverse. for sure. So yeah, we've got the rest of the day downhill to Towards where we're staying tonight, all through the cloud forest. We're gonna get going. Hard to believe that we're trekking through what is essentially part of the Amazon right now because we're still surrounded by mountains and you just picture the Amazon as being just this flat, dense jungle. I didn't know that the, the Amazon stretches all the way up into the mountains and obviously then it's known as a cloud forest. But honestly, the scenery here is just unbelievable. The mountains were one thing and now we've got this incredible valley, forested valley in front of us. So much diversity to Peru, it's just crazy. Don't want to meet any mules on that bit. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Just a... I think it's about the same size as yesterday. Need it. Made it. Oh my god, well long done. So tonight we're sleeping in these very cool little mountain huts. This one's ours. It's got two beds, but can't beat this view. After a very long day, we pretty much ate dinner. How on earth do you transport a cake? What? See? The heck? How is that possible? Now I'm very impressed. 
had an unexpected hot shower, played some cards, and crashed in our little alpine hut, ready for another very early wake-up call in the morning.